And welcome back. I'm joined by Renal again. How are you doing? I'm very good. So we just had a nice long chat about IoT in general and your passion for the topic. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about what SAP is up to. You, we touched on that a little bit in the prior. So let's do a shorter podcast on just what your experiences have been. SAP historically has talked a little bit about IoT, but it's been hard to understand exactly what that means. Mm -hmm. Like, what are they actually doing? Mm -hmm. So what did you learn this week? So you're right. That was exactly my impression over the last few years, which is why I kind of stayed away as I was learning about this whole new world of IoT. But this year, leading up to this event, there were um, some announcements uh, like, you know, the investment that these guys have announced that they'll, they'll put in $2 billion into IoT over the next few years. Also, the hiring of Tom itself. Tom Raftery, yeah. IoT evangelist yeah. on board. Yeah. Um, and um, the the rail, um, the Italy rail project uh, that they talked about. Right. Um, all of these uh, seem to indicate that SAP is starting to get very serious about it. And so I figured um, that I'll, I'll make a trip and meet some old friends and see see how it goes right right um getting here um i found that uh, that was exactly true there's a renewed um very energetic push towards sap becoming a part of the iot ecosystem um there were different products that are moving in that direction there was the the IoT application services as part of the the HANA Cloud platform. Uh, and there was discussion about the two things I mentioned in the previous uh, section uh, right. around connected vehicles network and the uh, asset intelligence network. Um, and I think that some of what's going into these pieces probably already existed with within the SAP ecosystem, uh, but some of it is. Um, brand new types of challenges for SAP, right? Um, SAP systems are, are were designed to be transactional um, mm. in nature. And um, IoT data, just because of the rate at which it flows, doesn't really fit well into that transactional model where every transaction hits the database, for example. So um, there's some new stuff here that um, I think these guys are working on because I saw some very good uh, promising uh, uh, slides and also discussions uh, with various people that looked uh, quite uh, quite uh, positive. And your company has been heavily involved, as we discussed in the last podcast, whoa, my business card just threw away, I'll go get that in a sec, um, in smart city Internet of Things projects in particular. Right. Are you seeing some opportunities for collaboration around that? Um, yes, I think so. Um, I, I'm hoping for at least, right? Um, I've been talking to various people. Um, and um, uh, SAP has uh, some uh, parking-related uh, announcements that they recently made the, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And they talked about um, a project in collaboration with uh, Bosch, where they're trying to optimize um, truck parking on the Autobahn, uh, which looks very interesting. V can be an enabler of those kinds of solutions as well, and that was part of my discussion this week. We've had a lot of success in fairly harsh environments in various U.S. cities uh, in our parking infrastructure. Uh, so we think that we can bring that to the table and 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 talk about uh, what to do and what not to do around parking. Um, similarly, um, the um, uh, the connected vehicles network uh, is broader than that, I believe, because um, it's about sending data to. Uh, two cars or fleets of cars um, about uh, the city infrastructure and, you know, as we were saying, which streets to prefer and which streets right. to avoid. And that, you know, we're doing several types of sensors that can enable that context. Yeah, so it seems to me that there's a lot of different pieces to the IoT strategy and some live projects, but a lot of stuff that's like on the verge in or the works, still in the yes. works. In yeah. the works, yes, that's correct. But there's a there's a key competitive advantage, I believe, with SAP. Uh, that something. thing flew further away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It may fly out of here, but the walls are pretty high, so I think I'll get it back. <laughs> All right, so um, SAP has a, I think, a distinct advantage in the IoT world, right? There are a lot of products in the market that are that claim to be IoT platforms, yeah. right? The problem is that the value from the IoT 
is generally delivered as part of a bigger business process, right? It's it's rarely so that just by connecting a thing, you get something, right? Especially, and I'm talking about the industrial part, right? Consumers is a slightly different discussion, but from an industrial city's perspective, um, most of the time, um, the value in getting data from the physical world is in making that data part of a bigger process that it happens in an industry. So let me give an example. You know, in streets, um, let's uh, so we have a device that can uh, control street lights, and it can also detect that a street light has failed or is about to fail. Yeah. Right uh, now, that's cool, but on its own, that information doesn't deliver on value, right? It delivers on value when you know, well, okay, this street light is about to break. Who can I send to fix it? Who will pay for that fixing? Is there an insurance that I can look into? When can I find time on the schedule of that person to go fix it? What parts will he need to go fix it? All of that, and how can I best optimize his route so that he doesn't go only for one street light but is maximizing his work hours? All of that business context is inside SAP or ERP systems. And that is a unique advantage point for SAP. And I think if they can enable other players in the ecosystem to play well with that business context, that would be a winning combination. It's kind of interesting because what it does for SAP is it presents it with an opportunity where their 30 year plus whatever history with ERP, it's not irrelevant. But it's not an ERP centric conversation, and they don't have to talk a lot about their ERP systems. But the back end, the transactional back end, and all the data there, like ends up being implicated, which is promising for SAP if they can frame that properly. I think I am. I absolutely agree. I think. Uh, um, I think the the. Uh, that ERP discussion isn't isn't new and fun and and, and exciting, but it's still yeah. very much part of delivering value to businesses. Maybe I'll keep my Twitter handle John ERP for a few more <laughs> few more years. After yeah. all, man, it yeah. might still oh, I could change to John I- IoT, but I'd be well. A you might worried. get a few people asking, "What the hell is ERP?" But you know, yeah, that could <laughs> that could come up, right? Especially from the younger generation. Yeah. So okay, so so obviously you've seen significant progress since the last time you showed up at SAP show three years ago on mm-hmm. IoT. Mm-hmm. What what does SAP need to do in the next like year to, to push this forward? Um, that's a good question. I think what we saw at this show was a lot of promises and some really exciting looking work. Um, I think different people in the industry are going to come back next year and ask the question, oh, well, okay, what did you achieve? Where are the real installations? Uh, who are the real customers benefiting from this? And so I think now the next step is getting real deployments out there and delivering some, some value to, to customers. So the customer use cases being more fleshed out, examples of customers who are quote unquote winning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the other piece I think I would add is just I keep hearing about these different IoT initiatives and maybe finding a way to tie them into a coherent picture so that I can kind of understand what all is going on would yeah. be helpful because you rattled off a bunch of them, but I've never really heard them summarized in one kind of clear way. That's true. I think you know? um, I, I agree, right? It's it's early. Um, I think... Uh, and it might ton- be that HCP would be part of that, the HANA Cloud platform, right? Where it will could, have to be. It where they could kind be. of, they could emphasize the IoT-based services that are offered there as, as a framework for getting started with SAP and IoT, for example. Yeah, it will have to be. And that reminds me of something else, right? Um, when this conversation happens, a lot of players that will want to be part of this ecosystem aren't necessarily SAP customers uh, before this point, right? Or definitely mm-hmm. not SAP vendors or partners before this point. Right. And um, enabling those uh, because it's an incredibly diverse ecosystem where different people are having small little wins in different parts of the world and it'll all have to come together. So, and SAP is in a good position to enable that. Um, I also think from a cohesive point of view standpoint. Um, um, the mentors had a good conversation uh, with Tanya Rockhart, and I think things are aligning under her team uh, pretty nicely. And if she keeps taking that role forward and pushing out one single message of this is our IoT solution, that would be great. Yeah. Well, and we can also keep an eye on, on you and your company and, and your dialogue with SAP, because I think you're not to single you out too much, but you're a great example of the type of company that SAP could work with 
to advance what they're doing internally, right? We really think so. so. Um, I'm I'm quite excited with the different conversations. Not that we're trying to solidify <laughs> that on this podcast, but <laughs> but 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 my point being that a lot of times SAP does its best work when it's not just working with Accenture and IBM. And, and look, I mean, I'm just picking two out of the tier one hat, uh. but. Look, those folks have their place and they provide good resources to some projects. But it's it's like when SAP figures out how to involve folks like yourself that have very specific industry skills and know-how, mm-hmm. but you're not a big partner, and they figure out how to make the monetization and the partnership work for you, that to me is when the impact starts to be felt. I agree. I've also seen, I, I completely agree with you, over the last you know decade or so of being involved in this world, the best stories have always been uh, a small player that came out of nowhere and, and you know on your show right over the years uh, those, are, show, those are the best absolutely. stories that I've come across right yeah, yeah definitely so. well, well best of luck with everything you're pursuing Thank good you. to have you back at a show again and we're looking forward to updates now we got to get you off to an IOT security meeting so yes. let's put a wrap on this talk it to you later it was a man. pleasure thank you yeah <laughs>